what? You're not worth it. I've never been one to play the offensive card, to rant about a piece of fictional media that doesn't affect me. But today, that changes. Patch Adams is one of the most disturbing pieces of shit that I've seen in a long time. Not only would it offend anyone who has had or known someone to have suffered from a disease or death, but it's also a complete bastardization of the real Patch Adams who did not consider death to be a fucking joke. But that's beside the point, because we're here to analyze a film, not get caught up in real shit, because according to this, death is funny. Now, just to clarify, I am not currently suffering from a disease, nor has it affected me personally. So, you can't say that that's altered my opinion. That being said, let's analyze Patch Adams. That's an appropriate tone. We open with Robin Williams, Hunter Patch Adams, checking himself into a mental hospital because he's suicidal. Damn, the movie just started. I mean, a half hour in, I could see it, but at this rate, you ain't gonna make it. We quickly establish one of the movie's main themes, being all people involved with hospitals are assholes, as they refuse to give him his own room. Is there any way I could have my own room? Oh, absolutely. Just call the concierge and ask for a suite overlooking the fountain. No, I, I prefer the cabana room. Yeah, I get used to this concept. This is made even more apparent as his roommate goes insane. <laughs> Evil! Also, I don't think a suicidal person would be put in a room with somebody like that, but what do I know? After making fun of a canatonic man, who clearly is canatonic, Beanie! Beanie! Where's the ceiling? <laughs> That's enough, oh, stop it. Right. Where do the birds fly, Beanie? <laughs> How do you say hello to Hitler? <laughs> this is fucking sick. He has a quote-unquote revelation. Look beyond the fingers. How many do you see? I'll give the movie credit on one thing, if you're gonna have a victorious scene about pissing, better this than what the Green Mile did. Legendary film, no doubt, but why that? And with his newfound inspiration, he checks out, but not without making them look as evil as possible. I must warn you, my report will read, AMA, that you were signed out of this hospital against medical advice. Ah, uh, doctors, bunch of sick bastards. Two years later, he enrolls in medical college, and we meet his roommate, the guy who he'll definitely never see eye to eye with, along with the evil Dean. First, do no harm. That ain't happening. And the female of the movie. Lesbian, ballbuster, airhead, leech, whichever one of these disgusts you the most, take your pick. Well, Please, pass the word, I'm not here to date, I am not here to flirt, I'm here to study. Quit pretending you're gonna be a strong woman, it's a 90s film. You start out cold, and then you become fragile. It's the way this period works. I see a cliché character brewing. That's two. I thought only I could repel women with that kind of raw efficiency. I make that three. Patch, he's Patch now, comes to the conclusion that learning stuff is boring, and as long as you can make people laugh, that's good enough. Kinda like how this outfit is good enough that he gets from a meat packaging convention to disguise himself and get near the patients. But what do you expect when you have doctors this evil? Treatment to stabilize the blood sugar. Consider antibiotics, possibly amputation. What the fuck kind of doctor talks like that? He then vandalizes the equipment for a truly offensive scene. This is fucking sick. Rightfully so, he's kicked out and reconsiders suicide. I mean, is given a second chance. So long as he obeys and keeps in line. Instead, he goes on a montage of being an asshole, distracts his not yet lover, Karen, who currently wants him to fuck off, and somehow doesn't get kicked out. 
He even ranks higher than her and is one of the highest ranking students, period. How the fuck did that happen? All he did was fuck around. What kind of bullshit is this? But somehow, this makes them friends, because like I said, that's how the 90s worked. Granted, it's not always done this poorly, but imagine this being done today. Uh, not that it should be. And just like that, she's all in with his bullshit behavior. Like giving this man his last safari. It was incredible, Patch. Almost as good as the real thing. They're fucking balloon animals. Is there a limit to this shit? I've always wanted to be in a swimming pool full of noodles. Oh, fuck no. That's gonna happen, isn't it? Also, sleep might be important to some people. You know? Eh, at least the notable mean guy tells him off. Listen, you little do-gooder prick. If you want to make yourself feel good, don't make me pay for it. Now get out of here, because you don't help shit. Yeah, he's got a good point. I, I mean, how dare you? <laughs> do you want to tell me what it is you think you're doing? Um, the same shit he's been doing? It's kinda late to complain now. He gets accused of cheating, which is reasonable, and it turns out his roommate agrees. Because obviously he wouldn't grade that high, and obviously being an asshole wouldn't help anybody. This scene blatantly points this out, but in this movie, medicine is literally evil. So, Mitch, the roommate, is just a prick. That you think that you have to be a prick to get things done, and that you actually think that that's a new idea. I wonder what he's gonna do when his friend tells him to lay low and he seemingly agrees. Of coming attraction. There's... Death. To die. To expire. Extinct. Curtains. Deceased. Demised. Departed and defunct. Dead as a doornail. This is fucking sick! So, for some completely unexplained reason, they let him handle the welcoming committee for a group of visiting gynecologists. What do you think is gonna happen? Welcome, cold-handed ones! What did you think was gonna happen? So, finally, he gets expelled. Don't know why it took this long, but I'm happy. What are you smiling at? Is this all a big joke to you? Oh, it's the thing from the opening. But the Dean of Medicine decides to let him stay, as long as he promises... Literally the next scene. Oh, and they're lovers now. After his friend dies, which I thought was supposed to be funny, he decides to open his own hospital and see patients for free. Without a license. And, I shit you not, steals from a hospital. Steals. Dead fucking serious. But, then again, it was an evil hospital. So, what happens next is both stupid, cliche, and pretty offensive. Karen is given a tragic backstory of not trusting men because she was molested, which is the cliche part. She goes to see a dangerous looking patient who wasn't back checked, that being the stupid part, and. Corinne Fisher was murdered. She was with Larwood Silver. The shotgun involved, and he turned the gun on himself. And this is the offensive part. You know why? Because in real life, it wasn't his lover. It was his friend. His male friend. Wasn't gay. Nothing to do with that. They thought, let's just change it for no fucking reason, because it's more cliche. This is fucking sick. Not to mention, this goes directly against the theme of the movie being, why can't you be emotionally invested? You've already destroyed the message you so desperately, distastefully tried to convey. Fuck this movie. He does the right thing and goes to kill himself, but... Yeah, back in that emotional scene, she said she wanted to be a caterpillar, so this butterfly must be her. Or it's just symbolic. I guess that's what this is supposed to mean. What the fuck is wrong with these people? 
but this means he can go back to working with patients and with the help of Mitch, who is now nice, can finally give that old lady her pool of noodles. <laughs> This is fucking sick. So they basically repeat the scene of him being kicked out because of their standards, as if that's the worst thing he's done. So we have a courtroom scene in which he literally states that death is funny, repeats every cliche in the book, and all the kids come in with big red fucking noses on. I'm so angry. So, of course, he gets to graduate, and we get one more cringe-worthy scene that I don't want to talk about. Fuck this movie. It's, it's so fucking awful. Not one. Not one! Redeeming quality exists within this trash. This film is not funny. It's not inspiring. It makes no fucking sense. And above all, it's actually offensive. Not just for its portrayal of death, which is very poorly done, but the fact that they could take the life of the real Hunter Adams and turn him into a fucking clown. He was a real doctor who did real work, took time with patients, helped people, actually provided free service, which saw none of the 21 million that Robin Williams made on this film. But that aside, this film is fucking disgusting. How and why they would make this when they could have just attempted to replicate some form of reality and make a decent depiction of a real person is beyond comprehension. But even as a standalone movie, there is nothing of quality to be found in what even I would call a truly offensive film. Maybe the most offensive. I'm the analyst, and remember kids, if Family Guy is in better taste than you, you probably shouldn't exist. Did you consider the ramifications of your actions? What if one of your patients had died? What's wrong with death, sir? What are we so mortally afraid of? Why can't we treat death with a certain amount of humanity and dignity and decency and, God forbid, maybe even humor? <laughs> 